Okay, I think uh, we have been discussing about this question, what is chemical reaction engineering. I have given uh, some examples like uh, you know car technology. Okay, if you really remember even chemical technology also you will not forget and even you won't forget about science, engineering and technology. Okay? And as I told you, best way to remember is telling to someone about what I have told you in the class. Okay? Yeah, in the girls hostel or boys hostel, if you start telling, then you do not forget. Once or twice you tell, you will not forget. Right? And also we have taken another example that brick technology. Okay? But I did not ask, but how do you make uh, you know uh, scientific card also we discussed. Right? When it is taking 10 hours or 8 hours, then you have to go to science level of manipulating the genes of the microorganisms, then I think you can make really scientific curd. How do you make scientific bricks? Because what we have discussed was simple technology. How much water you have to add, uh, you know, what should be approximately the stones in the mud. Although if you put mud, uh, it may you know melt and it may not have sufficient uh, strength. So, that is why. How do you make scientific bricks? In fact, there is tremendous amount of uh, science is required. Yeah, tremendous amount of science is required if you want to make scientific bricks. That means, using science designing perfect bricks. Okay, how do you do that? Huh? Ah, do not go to some other thing. We are talking about only mud and sand. Not for fly ash will not give you scientific bricks. What is science in fly ash? It is waste. Ah, that is why it is science. Huh? So, what is the science in fly ash? Tell me, if you have some other ideas, please tell me. It is a substitute for mud and you know, yeah, that is all. But I am asking, how do you now make scientific bricks? The technology we know, the steps we know, how do you make that? So, you have to think you now, you have to always extend your brain what uh, you know beyond what teacher told. Then only you have that you know research mind. Teacher tells something, then you have to also expand on your own from your brain a little bit, you know, some other steps, okay, some other projections there. Okay. So, you, whatever you believe the, the teacher tells, then you are a good listener, we will accept that. But you are not using your brain to sharpen and also your brain to do something new. This is what is, in fact, unfortunately, that is the problem with all our, uh, I mean, with, with the society, our society. Because that is why we are not able to make good researchers. The reason is that we always believe elders, mother and father, whatever they say, they may show bull and then they may say this is elephant, you will say yes, 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 it is elephant. Okay? Then you do not question them at all. Uh, similarly, you do not question the teachers, you do not question yourself. So, that is why we have a stable society, but again you know normal society, they, it cannot innovate or it cannot uh, do something new. That is why even though our culture is one of the oldest, we could not produce anything at international level, producing technology, producing materials, producing some theories, all that because we simply believe God and afterwards we believe our parents and afterwards we believe our teachers. You should not believe any, any one of these people which I told, even you should not believe God. Okay? Yeah. Now, if you want to break away from science, otherwise you know you always say that okay god gives something we only use a, we use that and even if you don't get food okay today only god gave me only one meal so the remaining two meals anyway tomorrow he may give at that time we will see that's why you know because where is the because you are trying to compromise and in research you should be more aggressive you cannot be compromising for each and everything okay so that is why you have to also think you know when i told how do you make uh, curd scientifically you should have two examples only i gave the other example you should have thought on your own that how do I make now, okay, he told me how to make a scientific card, but now how do you make scientific bricks. So, at, at least at this point of time, that is why I think in schools also we are killing the innovation and we are killing the enthusiasm. What do we give in the schools? 10 kgs of books behind that fellow. Okay, he is already only one foot and above the ground and by putting this weight again, you know, anti-gravity, it will pull down. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, pull down. So, I think that he also cannot grow faster. Okay, always gravity is acting on him, no? Another additional 10 uh, kgs or 5 kgs load. Okay, that is all what we give him. We never uh, you know, allow them to, to uh, think on their own. Even if they want, I think you know, there were two ice creams and if I, one ice cream is black and another ice cream is white and this fellow wants to take that black, that chocolate ice cream, 
So then mother, father, no, 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 that's not good. You only eat this. You have to allow him to eat, and if it is bad, then he will come back anyway to this. If he doesn't like the taste, but we try to dictate. No, 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 that's good. I mean, that's not good. You only do this, or you only eat this. That's why we are not allowing. I mean, we are doing a wonderful job as parents to all of you. Okay, but when you become parents, don't do that. You allow your child to go anywhere, jump up and down. I think ask any question. Okay, you have to patiently answer. Then only I think uh, don't give them book. Uh, uh, don't give him books. Don't give him even computer. Okay, and uh, don't allow him to see the TV. Right? But ask him to think. That's all. Because TV. <laughs> that's all. What else is? <laughs> No, really. That's what is most important, no? So, what does he get by seeing the TV? That fellow sits and then always looks at that cartoons, right? I mean, cartoons are really innovative. If he makes the cartoons, not seeing the cartoons, if he is able to draw on his own cartoons and then make the new cartoons, then fantastic. <coughs> and what happens at the age of third, uh, you know, maybe third year or fourth year, he will get the specs. All of us got maybe around forty-five, fifty years, but most of the young children now because of the contribution from TV. They are getting only third year and uh, fourth year itself you know, this thick, and by the time he comes to engineering, he does not know where to go. <laughs> I think you know, yeah, because the thickness of this uh, thing is so much, so light cannot enter. Uh, everything is black for him. In the mind, black world is black. Everything is uh, uh, only black, darkness only. So that is why you should have thought. No, okay, now scientific bricks. How do you make scientific bricks? Just think. Plastic. With the plastic, okay. Why plastic? That means you you throw away mud and then only start with the plastic or what? I am talking about given only mud and uh, you know some uh, amount of solids. How do you make scientific bricks? Earlier, what we do, the, the technologist has a feel how much sand should be there, how much mud should be there. He mixes and then puts right some amount of water and all that. So now I am asking you on large scale produce like a chemical engineer. You produce like any other chemical produce bricks. How do you do that? What do you do? Ah, mixer is required for long time. Before that, straight away you start with mixer. Ah. Yeah. How how do you find out that? Yeah. Either trial and error or from theory where what size of the particle is good? What is the particle size? So normally they may use one mm particle. Okay, point five mm particle. Why point five mm particle is better than one mm? Or uh, why not two mm? Or why not point one mm? <coughs> Sorry. Yeah, all that is the science, right? I think that way. Then even if you can go to okay, can I use nano technology to make bricks? That means where nano powder, where I will bring all the powder together and then put them, uh, you know, like a puzzle form where uh, children play and all the puzzles together and then you will have the brick. That is pure science, which you cannot realize at this point of time. You may do it. I told you know that example where that girl told me how do you make sulfuric acid? It means hydrogen bring, sulfur bring, O4 bring, and then put together and then give it. Wonderful, really. If you are able to do the same thing for even brick for any chemical, that is what is the pure science. But we are not able to realize that. So that is why when you are now going for with scientific scientific knowledge is how to find out what is the particle size and how this particle should be orientation of particles inside the mud. How do you arrange them? Like crystal structures, right? You know, from the basic crystals, if you go, how beautifully those molecules are arranged using in the crystal structure, where you have sufficient strength also for those structures. For you know, some structures have a lot of strength, some structures have weak strength, all that. So, using that science, can you also now design your brick? You see, for every technology, like for example, bullock carts. Bullock carts, we we think that it is lowest technology because no science is, no equation is used for making bullock carts. right so then if you want to really design a scientific bullock cart you need tremendous amount of theory tremendous of, uh, amount of engineering okay in this brick technology once you find out what is the orientation of solids and what is the right amount of uh, mud right amount of uh, uh, i mean uh, water and also particle size all that scientifically when you see and how do you see scientifically you have to arrange all that and try to find out which gives you the best toughness strength That is what is science. Then afterwards, you have to convert that into product. So then you have to use engineering principles. As he said, I want to have this continuous uh, brick making. So 
you mix at one point uh, actually you uh, now need one bin with mud another bin with particles then both of them will fall into the mixer and also another bin with water right amount of water all three you know you should have flow rates okay how do you measure uh, flow rate of solids because i know btech and mtech lab you are btech lab you should you should have done how do you measure flow uh, liquid okay but i think solids definitely you do not done how do you measure mass huh? measure the mass mass flow rate yeah, but how do you measure because continuously no Huh? <laughs> Where? In the Very changing weight. Yeah, so that means the entire bin must be on a balance. Where? Yeah, load cells and all that. You know, you see, all that is the one word what we have to use. I know most of you have not been exposed to this information, and all of us have been exposed how to measure water flow in the labs. That's why I asked you that question so that you can think again. So load cells are there. I mean, big platforms are there now. Entire lorries are weighed. You know. Okay, so that kind of thing you have to think now, and then say that yes, how do I measure now solids, flow rates? Because you have to send maybe 10 kgs per hour or maybe 15 kgs per hour continuously, then mix them. After mixing, what it has to go through, like a extruder, right? And then after that, okay. So at the end, you know, the paste will not flow. That's why you have to put extruder. And now after extruder, it goes to the mold, and this mold must be automatic. That mold, right? So that automatic means you have designed that mold. and then the moment uh, the paste falls there it come, mold is filled up and another thing will come and then uh, yeah up, and apply also sufficient pressure and then mold will go this will be thrown out to the directly to for centering ah uh, drying drying and afterwards centering okay drying now you see because it is a continuous system you cannot wait now for 8 hours or solar drying means 4 days 5 days so now you have to design a dryer where all this operation must be done very quickly so then it has to go to center centering also generally centering may take time but even then you have to design that one faster that is what is engineering principles you are using for brick making with the help of science now you define chemical reaction engineering with these examples now you define because i have given sufficient examples when do when engineering comes when science comes and when technology comes forget about technology now i am asking chemical reaction engineering definition it is engineering of chemical reactions okay so now whatever we have discussed that engineering principles we have to use now for chemical reactions to make them work what are the engineering principles which you use in chemical reactions yeah mixing is one because i think when you take large quantities and then you have to mix them thoroughly yeah that is one ha huh? ah yeah flow anyway if it is a continuous reactor flow must be used that is also an engineering principle fluid mechanics heat transfer how do you remove heat yeah how do you add heat so that means all engineering principles when you are applying to chemical reactions that is called chemical reaction engineering see now you don't have to even remember that you know because automatically when you know all these sequences you know the definition already correct now if you remember that curd if you remember this brick technology because those things we told because you know them already okay how to make them you know but now applying those same things here also applying that engineering principles for chemical reactions like for example flow uh, if it is a continuous reactor even if it is batch also of course you know how to feed and all that so then temperature how do you control how do you supply heat how do you remove heat and before that you also should know kinetics okay what is the type of uh, reaction what you have it may be having a order of reaction or it may not be having order of reaction that means you need a rate expression how do you get this rate expression from experiments kinetics you know that, that is kinetic studies and thermodynamics will not give you rate expression and thermodynamics will not help you in actual reaction engineering in the sense that for the design for the design what you use only rate expression not equilibrium data right equilibrium data will come if it is a reversible reaction in the equation automatically you know what is equilibrium i mean equilibrium constant capital k also will be present in the rate expression but that rate is important how do you get the rate by doing experiments or if it is already given that this is first order you simply write minus ra equal to k into ca 
So, all the engineering principles you are using that and what is the difference between uh, chemical engineer and chemist now? Chemist will not bother about the flow, even if he does continuous, but it is only very small quantity where you will put a jar there and then from there drop by drop it will fall. And drop by drop if you make in the industry, you can make you can never make that kind of large quantities. That is the difference between chemist and chemical engineer. And we do not have to blame him or he need not blame us, because that is his duty or her duty as chemist. What is that? To find out how the molecules are moving, to find out how the molecules are reacting. And how do you get finally, whether this reaction is happening or not, that information. But his scale is always very, very small. So, now you see with these examples, you can even draw the flow chart. If I ask you now, curd making flow chart, can't you make now? Easily you can draw the flow chart. For example, brick, you know that initially you should have the bins and then both have to fall and then you have the mixer. From the mixer, it has to go to again extruder, from extruder it has to go to mold and all that. And now, you can imagine any process, if you that is why process is important, mind is important, mind means you know thinking is important. If you think about the process step by step, what is really happening, where the heat transfer is coming, where the mass transfer is coming, where the reaction is coming, where the fluid flow, fluid flow is throughout if it is a continuous system. Even if it is bad system, it is continuous, I mean uh, all the time you have to pump the liquid after the reaction is over uh, to store or you know from the reactant uh, storage to the uh, re uh, reactor. So, all these things are happening already. So, now that is why even chemical technology very, we, uh, will be very easy you know by, listening, by, by answering these questions what we have. That five questions will give you the entire knowledge, okay? five or six questions. Right? What is the first question? Chemical engineer, what is chemical engineering? Then what does a chemical engineer do? Yeah. I think you have forgotten, uh, uh, yeah, already. Yeah, what is the third question? How does a pro process flow chart uh, start and then? What is chemical reaction? What is the next question? What is the information, what necessary, is the information for reactor? Reactor? That is the question now. What is the information required for reactor design? Okay, I think this is very clear now. I think you can, see I do not have to even now define. You know how to define now chemical reaction engineering, right? That is using chemical, uh, I mean using engineering principles to conduct chemical reactions. That is all. I think you know the first person who cached that name after uh, this, uh, after the seminar is over, can you guess who? Huh? Who cached that name? <coughs> Excellent. Levenspiel. Immediately he got that name and then put the name of the na name of his book as chemical reaction engineering. Fantastic. Levenspiel is really great. The way he makes things simple. Okay. Before that also there are two more books. Uh, well, uh, Wallace there was a book W W A L A S Wallace. Okay. I think chemical kinetics for uh, no kinetics for chemical engineers or so that is the title. But no not easily readable. That is a good book, but not easily readable. Then at the same time even James Smith book. Yeah, chemical engineering kinetics. Yeah. So, that book also was there, but uh, those books are not that famous when compared to Levenspiel. Why? Because the presentation, the way he explained things. Presentation is really beautiful in Levenspiel. So, he immediately took the name and then put it for his book as chemical reaction engineering, because he has already uh, used that book. He, I know the Schmidt recently, maybe I think 5, 10 years back only that one. Uh, engineering of chemical reactions, again what a wonderful name. Engineering of chemical reactions, that means only he just changed this uh, you know words that is all engineering of chemical reactions instead of chemical reaction engineering. Okay. So, the next question was yeah wha, uh, what is that what is information what information is required what information is necessary yeah? okay <coughs> yeah is necessary for reactor design. Okay. Can you tell me what, what is that information required for reactor? Rate of reaction. Rate of reaction. Performance, reaction. Performance equation. Conducting pattern. Performance equation. Volume of the reaction. Volume of the reactor. Conduct. Flow rate. Flow rate. Yeah. See, you know the volume of the reactor. You know the rate, and you know. Initial concentration, yeah. you also know conversion? 
conducting you also know conversion then where is the design <laughs> all the questions you know <laughs> everything you are telling that you know you need volume you know i already conversion you have to give again if i give volume if i give conversion if i give cn art if i give rate expression there is no design everything is known and you are not told there tau okay you should also know tau okay <laughs> yeah if everything is known where is the design ha huh? equation amount of the product amount of the product uh, yeah product okay, that's correct because i think uh, flow rate indirectly uh, that gives the flow rate yield uh, will not come in the design because uh, you know, where are you using yield to design the reactor it's always conversion because the basic expression is written in terms of only reactants that's why reactants only get converted okay yeah but still you have not answered my question what is necessary <laughs> what is the information that is necessary for reactor design okay i will give you another uh, i mean some data you just tell me whether this is just sufficient for reactor design so i i give you k as let us say 1 minutes per inverse okay and then okay see <coughs> i will give also give you someone is asking initial concentration cn art as 1 kilo mole per meter cube yeah and i will give you v as uh, yeah 1 meter cube per second i will also give you f n art as 1 kilo mole per second okay i will also give you x a x a equal to let us say ah uh, 90 percent conversion do you have all the data for reactor design type of reactor contacting conduct batch or container which reactor we are using we have to mention that yes, yes. performance equation is not known oh performance equation huh? Hmm. Ah? Catalyst. You want to find out? Where is something? Element. Rate expression is required. Ah, okay. Homogeneous. Rate expression is not given. Huh? Rate expression. Ah, it's first order. Okay, okay. First order. K is given as minutes in what? Minutes. First order. First order. Which is totally wrong. Okay, it need not be first order for many cases. Mm. Okay. Because our mind is still in the LKG. That's why all of you say that it is first order. Mm. <laughs> This is truly valid only for homogeneous reaction. Mm. The moment you go for heterogeneous reactions, it may not be valid. Uh, because rate can be expressed based on various things. Pressure. Because homogeneous reactions we base normally on moles oh, converted yes. per unit time per unit volume. if you base only on unit unit volume then this definite uh, you know this uh, indication is right that this is first order that's why it's only strictly for homogeneous reactions where rate is based on that rate can be based on surface area rate can be based on weight of the catalyst rate can be based on mass in a no i mean surface area volume of the catalyst volume of the catalyst volume of packet bed so there are so many things which you can have that also we will discuss later so that is why yeah the most important thing it is missing from here is i have not mentioned what kind of reactor okay then levenspiel has put all this information that is necessary for reactor design in this wonderful diagram i think uh, some of you may be knowing because she is telling already performance equation and all that i don't know how many of you used uh, levenspiel book all of you mm -hmm. all of you yeah then you must know but i don't know what is the meaning whether you know really the meaning of this diagram yeah what is here reactor this is input this is output yeah then we have here what is called kinetics and here we have contacting yeah some more things are there here in kinetics we will say here chemical and physical
physical and in contacting you have batch and you have continuous. And in continuous again you have yeah, not semi continuous I think you know yeah. Yes, we have here oh. <coughs> to maintain the same thing. Okay, here I have. I hope you understand this PF is plug flow. Oh, I think first time I have to write because others also are there. Plug flow and mixed flow. Yeah, mixed flow. So, now this entire thing also we can imagine as a, a performance equation, performance equation, it is an equation indirectly, is output is a function of input kinetics and contacting. Okay. This is a function and this is the performance equation. Yeah, I think here this bracket is there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this uh, output means what do you get from this equation? I mean, this output means uh, what parameter you are expected to calculate. If that is an equation, conversion, huh? volume, conversion, m volume, volume, volume of the reactor, volume of the reactor. Yeah, which one is right? Or both are right? Both. Both, both are. Both you have to calculate? No sir. Given one, you can calculate. Yeah, given. One. Given one, you can calculate. Always the problem in chemical reaction engineering is that given the volume, find the conversion. Given the conversion, find the, find the volume. Yeah. Whenever you are designing a new reactor, because in reactor volume you do not know, that is why you have to always assume that what is the conversion. No one tells you what is the right amount of conversion. Okay? And uh, ambitiously speaking, all of us want 100 percent conversion. But if you go to 100 percent conversion, the volume of the reactor will be infinity it occupies the whole universe you don't have space to go and operate you should be inside the reactor okay yeah so that is the reason why you have to assume some conversion economically viable conversion otherwise you know from 90% conversion 95% conversion 99% conversion the value will value of volume will tremendously change when you derive the equations when you calculate you will know so, from 0.99 to 0.995, tremendous exponential increase, okay? very steep increase. So, volume will become infinity when you go to 0.9999 like that. So, that is the reason why economically viable conversion which only you know. As engineer, you have to have that feeling that okay, beyond this. Nowadays, of course, with computers, we can simulate with 0.9999 and then 0.999, 0.999, 0.9 like that. Okay. So, then you will have what will be the total volumes you are getting. So, depending on those volumes, you can choose what is economically viable. Why economically viable means, if the volume is infinity and you have to bring the uh, material which is already available in the whole universe and then try to design. Volume itself is infinity. Okay. So, materials of construction is required and how do you supply heat, how do you remove heat, all these things is a problem. So, that is why economically viable. In all these definitions, always that economics is coming for engineering. Okay? That is why another simple example I will tell you to make you remember that as a scientist, I do not have to worry about economics. Right? One example is, let, uh, let me say this, that I have invented a small uh, pill, okay, tablet and if I take the tablet, Lifelong, I do not have to take any food because that gives you sufficient amount of nutrition to energy uh, to the body, nutrition, energy, everything to the body. But only problem is the cost of this 
tablet may be 1 billion dollars. Okay? Scientist can say that. Cost of my tablet is only 1 billion dollars. Okay? You cannot uh, find out any fault with him. But as an engineer, if you are able to produce that one for 1 paisa, then there is no chemical engineering, there is no electrical engineering because who will? And after all, we are all working only for our food and life. The moment you have that food, very happy that one paisa somehow you get it and lifelong you do not have to eat and then you can always happily jump and dance and all that. You know, this, this place will become really paradise. You know paradise what they do most of the time? Huh? Yeah, then yeah, what, the, what do they do? <laughs> In paradise, at least the stories tell us that there are four beautiful girls. Who? Ramba, Ramba, Always they will be dancing, others will be always watching them. That's all. That is what they do in paradise. So, our place also will become paradise. Okay? So, we will have many Rambas here. They have only one Ramba. We have many, many here. Beautiful people on this planet. Okay? So, that is why, you know, that is the difference between a scientist and an engineer. Always when engineer is making products, it should be as economically viable and also it should be affordable by the people who have to buy those products. Otherwise, what is the point in uh, uh, you know uh, making this wonderful pen with nice plastic and all that and then say that again this is 1 billion dollar, who will buy? 1 billion dollar I think even Ambani's do not have, Tata's do not have, 1 billion they have? Oh, they have. Huh? Oh my God. I am a old. <laughs> I am a old generation guy where I think uh, our dosa used to cost, uh, uh, cost only 10 paisa or 15 paisa, okay, dosa or idli maybe only uh, 5 paisa. So, that is the generation which we belong. So, the moment you put more zeros, I think our mind will not work. A billion has many zeros. If you ask me, sir, billion, how many zeros? I do not know. I do not know. I know how many zeros 10 has, only one. <laughs> that is all. Okay, anyway, so this is the information. And you know, yeah, yeah, this is economically viable thing is very, very important and in all engineering, it, irrespective of chemical engineering, every engineer should feel that yes, he has to produce anything, whatever he is producing. If he is uh, constructing a house as civil engineer, then again, it cannot be costing you know millions or billions of dollars. If he is able to make small houses for everyone, excellent engineer. And for that again, civil engineers alone cannot uh, live, because chemical engineering should be there. Why? They have to supply cement. Correct, no? Yeah. And inside the furniture also, I mean wood we are not making, but I think that beautiful paintings for wood, uh, varnish for wood and carpets, all this material. Huh? Yeah, fecal to, uh, if they do not have fecal, they can use nail size. <laughs> Earlier they were using only nails, nails nicely, because I think on this planet even iron is not available, so that is why we gone for fecal. Yeah, you are telling something? Huh? Blast furnace also we need blast furnace. Ah, blast furnace we need. Blast furnace again the technology there is again chemical engineering because that is gas solid non catalytic reactions. Okay? This iron is converted, iron ore is converted to iron. Right? Yeah, that also we will discuss in the next class and uh, yeah, I mean next uh, course. Yeah. So that is why this uh, yeah, even uh, electronics engineer, if you produce T V for uh, maybe again billions of dollars, who will buy? Okay. But that is why now the TVs and all that, I think this is the electronics which uh, where the cost of electronic components are every time decreasing, decreasing, decreasing. That is the only thing. All other costs are increasing, increasing, increasing. Okay? You can see earlier what is the pen drive and now what is the cost, earlier what is the cost of CD, now what is the cost of CD. I think I was surprised, I think sometime back my students were telling that even for 7 rupees, huh? 3 rupees, huh? 7 rupees you get a CD. And I was remembering that it is 120 rupees when I purchased it long time back. Okay, now I only take from others. <laughs> okay, yeah. So that is the kind of thing, and uh, like that in every engineering, if you are able to produce goods cheaper and cheaper, this planet will be really paradise. Okay, and even producing uh, uh, not only materialistic things, even for food. Even now we don't have much food. Many people are there without food. If you are able to produce that food, you know excellent fertilizers where immediately before putting the fertilizer itself, the crop should come, if it smells. Okay. <laughs> the moment you show the smell for the plants, if they are growing so happily, you know, why not? Just I think, you know, 
have lots of smell and then just breeze over the uh, you know the fields then automatically you will get very beautiful fruits and then uh, all wheat rice all that then the entire planet will be so beautiful but you know for human mind nothing is impossible that's why i like science fiction movies i was telling you know because there their mind you know how beautiful it has imagined particularly that avatar movie the entire planet was in the mind of james cameron you know he is the director he was the director he is the director entire planet right and also how he imagined the people what should be their height what should be their color and you know everything oh huh, sorry yeah floating mountains that is a new concept floating mountains i don't know that floating mountains are really floating because density different uh, difference and all that is there i mean anything which is floating having more than density of air it should fall so that air should be very very thick i think very uh, dense air otherwise you know they cannot float no otherwise the mountain should be like cotton you know mountain i mean there are big trees also on those mountains right and all that imagination and i think the best imagination in that movie which i like it is putting that pigtail to yeah for the you know when they are riding the birds or horse that concept is so beautiful concept because that we can also use okay you have to go today and then put your pigtail to cre book learn spell book then everything you will be part of that you know concept is so beautiful and in our uh, world uh, scriptures this is there already whatever you do you have to be part of that whatever you do so that means that he is now physically showing you how to become part of that that's all the difference we have already you know whatever you do you have to completely immerse in that when you do that i think dhaneshwar is one of the wonderful names the moment you close your eyes and meditate you will be automatically dissolving in whatever you do in whatever you do the moment you are preparing for a cre exam close your eyes the entire cre book should be before you each page page by page then automatically you are part of you because you are seeing by closing your eyes that book in your mind you know i told you we have all of us as mental screens not mental mental screens <laughs> all of us are one way or other mental that is different <laughs> but all of us have mental screens so those screens will automatically project whatever we would like to have if you have the familiarity with that i gave i don't know whether i asked in this class or somewhere else so the moment i i tell dilly what do you remember immediately when i ask you yeah so that means immediately depending on your exposure someone may imagine you know in his brain or in the mental screen kutub minar someone may see that the gateway of india someone may see the parliament bhavan someone may see that palika bazar where they are interested in shopping and all that okay so th- that is the kind of mental screen i am talking and that mental screen can be beautifully used for our uh, yeah either cre or any subject yeah, for our chemical engineering that is why i think you know i have some exercises for the student you know just go and sit down in your room and then just imagine a uh, heat exchanger and then try to plot the temperature uh, profiles you will never forget the subject if you do that imagine a distillation column and then just imagine where is the feed how the temperatures are varying from bottom to the top or how the uh, concentrations are varying that means indirectly what i am uh, asking you is to plot temperature profile and concentration profile right and now you can go to extraction column in the extraction columns it's a column there may be mixer settlers also you know one mixer settler where it mixes and then settles in some other one all that so there what kind of uh, concentration and temperature profiles you will have you just sit down and imagine and try to plot all that in your mind you will never forget the subject it's not the marks which are important which may be you may be getting <coughs> sorry yes in iit madras we have yes 10 out of 10 in some other uh, places it may be a a may be 10 out of 10 or it may be 100 out of 100 you know some many university also are giving uh, still uh, the uh, yeah actual marks right absolute mark so when you have 100 out of 100 on the paper doesn't mean that you have 100 out of 100 knowledge in that subject but when you do the way i am telling you just imagine and then try to plot in that subject whatever uh, things what you have gone through you will never forget the subject and all the way subject is with you and marks are in your cupboard correct no you take mark sheet and then you cannot carry every day so you will just put somewhere else but whereas this brain you cannot keep anywhere okay it has to come with you wherever you go so then i think you will beautifully understand whatever is happening in the in, in the subject 
that is what is the interest you have to develop i say everything is interest that's all and most of us are skeptical ah chemical engineering so what distillation so what reaction engineering so what so the so what is a very bad word like cracking the exam okay we, we, we have either so what or cracking the exam that is why simply we are indifferent for the subjects and every subject is a wonderful subject i, I tell you i have shown you what is the beautiful amount of science that is there even in brick technology bullock carts anything you see in nature what is made by us by made by nature also is wonderful so that's why we try to understand nature first and then try to mimic in our uh, things most of the things what we produce like flying aeroplanes yeah only birds you know our gods used you know that garut mantra it goes and then uh, and we also had what is called pushpak viman right pushpak yeah so all that were there in the mythology maybe they were imagining i don't know whether at that time they were really existing or is maybe their imagination because when people write these stories beautifully they can write again science fiction at that time if there was science fiction at that time you would have created in the mind that this is pushpak where people can travel at that time we did not know that right because no way to go back and only science fiction it is possible to go back into the past and also to go back into the future but right now we are not able to do that maybe it may come up sometime we don't know if you are able to do that then probably you will get so that is why i think you know this uh, uh, chemical reaction engineering definition on your own you can now create provided you do all that what i have told you that imagination thinking about these uh, examples then afterwards when you ask this question this is the one for the entire i mean i may teach you 10 reaction engineering courses i can never come out of this diagram and if you also understand the meaning of this diagram what do you mean by physical kinetics what do you mean by chemical kinetics what do you mean by contacting okay and what do you mean by batch continuous in in uh, continuous again you have two types of ideal reactors actually that is ideal contacting because you can have non ideal contacting but you will have lot of varieties but ideal contacting this is a wonderful information for the reactor design i thank really uh, levon spiel for this you know everything whatever you may have heterogeneous reactions homogeneous reactions everything you may have but still you cannot go out of this reaction i mean out of this diagram out of this performance equation who gives input to us i have already told you what do you mean by input input is not given by chemist yeah how do you get raw material how much is required product from product you have to back calculate and then say that some some uh, she was telling me that i think we need the flow rates right how much you have to produce okay that how much you have to produce is input that is in levon spiel language fn not fn not moles per second not volumetric flow rate molar flow rate that's what this one fn not fn not already you have with you uh, because someone went to market because you you know that this product has demand someone went to market and then they found that this is the total demand in a year so that is your plant capacity that is your fn not when you convert that product into reactant through stoichiometric equation okay that is one parameter this already we know okay then next one is kinetics from kinetics what do you get simply minus ra right order of reaction all that i think you know every reaction need not have order first of all so kinetics will tell you what is rate minus ra as an expression it may be k into ca if it is first order simple expression or it may be very complicated with the so many terms in the numerator in the denominator everywhere okay so that means we we have to now understand for my reaction where may i have the stoichiometry what kind of kinetic expression i get that is what this there i have to work here i don't have to work much why because it is market survey simply i go to market and then take the statistics and then say so much demand we don't have much work there and here i have tremendous amount of work in fact this is the most difficult step in chemical engineering in chemical engineering itself i can tell you then what is this one next one <coughs> next one is what type of reactor you are going to use that's all what you have if you know what type of reactor let me say batch reactor you have batch system right and then i know kinetics i know the input how much i have to put there right then what is that i have to calculate now 
if I want to design con uh, reactor, then I should assume also conversion and then fourth um, uh, the volume can be calculated. Or if I am uh, already having a reactor and I put all this because I have a batch reactor, I know kinetics, I know how much I have to dump into that because contracting is batch reactor. So, then this, this will be conversion because volume I know already that will be conversion. Okay? So, that is why either you have to assume conversion or you have to assume yeah, volume and always for a new process, for a new process it is only volume I have to calculate. For an existing reactor already old process there is already a reactor, now I can only calculate what is the maximum conversion I can get from the from that volume that is all throughout not only in you know in reaction engineering everywhere it is same. Okay. What are you doing in distillation? You are first assuming 99 percent purity, then calculating number of stages. If you know number of stages, what do you calculate? Okay, that problem you never thought normally. If I give you I have 10 plates and if I also give you a composition there is no problem, but you do not have to do anything. But always what we give is that either give number of plates and then ask you to calculate what is the composition you get and also flow rates and all that you know you get by material balance or, or give you the extreme compositions and ask you to find out how many stages required for that heat exchange. If I give you the temperatures you calculate area, if I give area you have to calculate temperatures and if I give area plus temperatures you do not have any problem, but I think even if I give in the examination you may try to calculate because your idea is oh there must be some trick. So, let me calculate <laughs> you, you never write simply that everything is given I do not have to do anything. In fact, that kind of questions I will give okay? <laughs> because I, you should know I say you should know what is wrong what is right. It is not that every problem you have to solve. So, that is why be careful in my question papers. So, that is the kind of everything may be there you do not have to do anything. <clears throat> if you write that nothing to be done you will get marks for that <laughs> because I think that is a great information for me because you are able to identify everything is there. That itself is a very good happy answer for me because you know that subject, you know that problem that is the reason. So, that is why in next classes what we discuss is only about this. We will start from kinetics and then we also go to contacting and we see how do we combine them and then after combining what kind of things we can do with that combining expressions. Many things we can do. Okay? We will close here. Thank you.